Hi, welcome to your video on writing your conclusion or explanation. Um, your conclusion is going to have three different parts to it, the claim, the evidence, and the reasoning, or what is better known as your CER. And I highly recommend that you use your notebook or look for the poster in the room for the CER rubric when you're writing your CER. Okay. So this video is going to be a little bit longer, so you might want to like fast forward to the part you're doing. So you might be just working on your claim or just working on your evidence or just working on your reasoning, feel free to like use that sidebar and skip to the part that you need. Okay, first thing I'm going to talk about is your claim. Your claim is a statement that answers the question answers the question that you wrote for your experiment, or maybe it's the problem a teacher gave you. It's only one to two sentences long, and it refers to the problem or question that you're trying to answer. So a bad example of a claim would be the size of the bubbles increased. Okay, doesn't give enough details and is not actually comparing your independent and your dependent variables. Here's a better claim. When experimenting to find out how glycerin affects bubble size, it was found that the diameter of the bubbles increased when the amount of glycerin in the solution increased. First part of my sentence is a quick little summary of the question or problem stated as a statement, not just the question, copied down. And then what you did um, I is use some words like increased or decreased to explain what was happening to the variables. So here's some tips on writing a claim. Tip number one, repeat the question or the problem, but remember to write it as a statement or a sentence instead of copying the question. Use comparative words such as increase and decrease, more or less. Some possible sentence starters could include when, the IV and then pick one, increased or decreased, then the DV and pick one, increased or decreased. Okay, moving on to our evidence. So your evidence is your numbers from your data table. Okay, so it needs to be a sufficient data that supports your claim and it has to be appropriate. And the experiment described for the evidence collected. So one or two sentences that kind of summarize your procedure to kind of explain how you got these numbers. Okay, so a bad example is the largest bubble diameter is 10.2. Missing units to that number, that's really important to have. And I don't know what this is comparing to, so it is not sufficient because you're not comparing it to the smallest bubble, and I also don't know how that large bubble was made and how that small bubble was made. Here's a better example. Here's the summary of the, how the data was collected. The average diameter of 10 different bubbles made from a solution of water, soap, and glycerin were calculated for three different concentrations of glycerin, two, four, and six drops. And now here's the evidence. Here's those numbers. It was found out that the bubble solution with the largest amount of glycerin of six drops had the largest average bubble size of nine centimeters. Notice each number has a unit after it and then we compared it so that's that sufficient amount of data compared to the smallest concentration of two drops with an average diameter of eight centimeters so here's some tips in doing your evidence pick two to three data points to compare from the beginning and middle and end of your data set be sure to use the pair of IV and DV numbers don't just give the DV number that's what a lot of students tend to do Make sure you pair that with your IV. Make sure every number has a unit and give a brief summary of your procedure, one to two sentences long. Here's a possible sentence starter for your evidence. According to the data, when, and then go pick an IV, was, and then give your DV number, then the IV was, and then give your DV. So, Pair these up and put them in a sentence, okay? Finally, and this is the hardest part for most students, is your reasoning. And this, the reason it's hard is because you actually have to explain what's going on in the lab and relate it to the science you're supposed to learn, okay? Part one is a justification that connects the evidence to the claim and why it counts as evidence. Why were those numbers appropriate and why were those numbers sufficient? Okay. Part two is using appropriate and sufficient scientific principles. Notice we're looking for scientific principles now 
to explain the connection between the results and the scientific concepts you're supposed to be learning in class. So what was that scientific concept that you were supposed to learn by doing that lab? Okay, here we're looking for the science. Okay, here's a bad example of reasoning. The largest bubble was the highest amount of glycerin because it is the strongest. Okay, we're looking for you to dig a little bit deeper than that. Here's some example of some reasoning. Okay, I drew a picture to help illustrate what I was trying to explain. Okay, and here I've written a pretty good sized paragraph. Your reasoning is going to be anywhere between four to five, if not more, sentences. But make sure you're not repeating yourself over and over and over again. Just because it's longer doesn't mean that it's better. Make sure each sentence has some stuff to it, has some content to it, and you haven't already written it already. Okay, so here's how I structured the, the reasoning. The data shows that when the glycerin was the smallest at two drops, it had a smaller bubble size. When the amount of bulk drops increased to six drops, the size of the bubble increased. Okay, so here is that part one. Notice that part one doesn't take very long. That's only one sentence. I just basically connected the evidence that I explained to why that mattered. Okay, here is my science. The reason why an increase in glycerin causes an increase in bubble size is because glycerin adds strength to the bubble. The film around the bubble is like a sandwich made up of soap on the outside and water in the middle. The soap and glycerin stops the water from evaporating. When the water evaporates, the bubble pops, so when there's more glycerin, less water evaporates and the bubble can get bigger. The glycerin in the solution helps keep the water from evaporating and the soap film stronger, allowing the bubble to get bigger. Notice I didn't repeat my claim and I didn't repeat my evidence. You may wanna to refer to it, but that is not the guts of the reasoning. Okay, here's some tips for doing your reasoning. Do not repeat your claim and evidence, okay? Start by writing why you use the evidence that you did, then make sure to include the required scientific vocabulary. Oftentimes your teacher will make a list of vocabulary words that you need to use for a particular CER. Make sure you're using those and make sure you're using them correctly. Okay, if you're having problems getting started, go ahead and use our possible sentence starter. The reason, and then summarize your claim. Again, I'm not repeating it word for word, I'm just summarizing my claim happened is because, and then put in the science. What is the science that is happening there? And that is the conclusion of writing your CER.